What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Honey, I Joined a Cult. This is a game where you're going to be building your own cult from the ground up. So if you've ever played like Prison Architect, or you've played RimWorld, or you've played uh, Academia, very much kind of the same idea, I think. You're going to be building a compound and your goal is to keep people locked inside your compound as much as possible while brainwashing them and then you send them out on missions against the government and basically you're just trying to raise all kinds of holy hell and also funding so that you can keep the cult going forever because at the end of the day, this is just an enrichment scheme. So anyways, we're going to dive on in today, spend about 25-30 minutes with the game and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this you did indeed want to do that, I'll have a link for you down below in the description. You can check it out there. Of course, there will also be links to my Discord, my Twitch stream, and my Twitter just in case you wanted to hang out a little bit more in my free time. So let's go ahead and we'll dive on into a new game. I've turned off the intro because I got a rough idea of how to play the game, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, we've got to decide on... We have the human corn cob. Okay. We've got to design our cult. So give me a minute. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to design all this. And then there is a lot of customization here. You can play around with a lot of things. I think it'll eat up probably like a fat chunk uh, of, the, of the actual gameplay. And so in order to kind of streamline and get us into building our cult, which also has a bit of runway on it, it's going to take us some time to get like all the infrastructure built. I'm going to skip on over this and we'll just kind of like, you'll come in and I'll show you my cult and tell you about it. All right. So I've got a set up here. Uh, we are going to be the Dragonborn. We're going to go ahead and, like, we're going to invoke some influences here. And the divine being of our cult is the Cash Dragon. Because ultimately, this is a financial extraction strategy. Uh, our main title is going to be the Ignominious Igniter. That's the leader of our cult. And then all of our little dragonlings are going to be called the Cash Flames. And then, of course, we must defend the Holy Yoshi Egg against all comers. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the game. All of our little cultists have arrived. So there's a distinction in this game between followers and cultists. Cultists are actually like the true believers, like the drink the Kool-Aid people, where they're like all in and will do anything to protect the religion. Aside from that, you'll also get followers who will participate in stuff and make like your rituals better and help you earn money, but largely are not as influential as the actual cult members themselves who are running things and making like the day to day happen. Uh, we need to get some stuff going. So what I would think here is we need to put in a foundation. I think everything here is, yeah, let's make it all out of metal, dude. That'd be cool. We've got to, you know, if you have it all made out of metal, that'll that'll really, really make this whole thing pop. I think we want this to be divisible by fives. Because I'm going to make a couple little flop houses over here that people can, like, live inside of. That's the first big thing that people require is just a corrugated shed to live inside of. I don't know if that's actually going to be... That's only got, like, a three space on the inside of it. I'm a little bit worried that that's not going to be good enough. Hmm... Maybe we'll take it up to, like, a 7. There we go. So if we go, like, 7 by, let's say, 20, that gives us a little bit of space to play around with. We can also do interior walls over here, since that's all going to be... We'll have, like, gray brick on the inside. That sounds like the plan to me. Uh, so we need 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. One, two, three, four, and then five. And then I guess a little room on the side is fine. We can actually repurpose that for something else a little bit later. But at the beginning of the game, we've got like basic stuff that we need effectively. I'll go ahead and slap in some doors. There we go. Doors all ready to rock. And then we need to designate these as the rooms that we want them to be. So actually that works out okay. We'll make this into a bathroom right here. That's where people can kind of like go to use the bathroom and make sure that like their hygiene is taken care of. Every single one of these cultists has like a list of stats and like stuff that they need. They also have like moods and if their mood gets too low they might run off and rat on you to like the FBI or to like the ATF. In this game they're called the SOBs. But anyways... We've also got things split up by hunger. We've got energy on every character. We've got bladder needs. We've got hygiene. We've got fun. And we've got prestige. Over here, you can see the skill sets of every single character. Uh, these skill sets are going to dictate, like, what tasks they are good at. Whether or not they're good at, like, let's say, espionage. Like, sneaking into places. Whether they're good at proselytizing. Whether they are good at simply doing maintenance around the base. Everybody's got stuff that they may or may not be good at. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and make two bedrooms over here. There we go. Two bedrooms have been made. I would like to go into the bathroom, and what I like is they've got this room-specific objects button right here where every single room needs specific things in order to function. And so you can just click that button right there, and it brings up the stuff that you need in order for, like, the room to make it happen, Cap'n. Uh, we'll go ahead, and we will put in, like... Two troughs, that sounds good. Uh, we've got toilet buckets, obviously. We've got to have those. And then we'll just have the toilet buckets directly face the people that are taking a shower right now. Why can't I put it right there? Is there a reason that I can't put it right there? Okay, well, I guess we'll just have one shower for right now. I think I need this to be a little bit larger, though. I don't think I have much of an option there. If I could spread this out a little bit further, will it let me do that? Like, if I just wanted to add a little bit of space to the room? Oh, look at that, it will. Very nice. Okay, so that's actually really, really good and intuitive as far as the UI design is concerned. Those are the little things I tend to worry about when it comes to, like, games like this where you're managing, like, a compound or you're doing a lot of building and there's a lot of, like, little objects that people can interact with. Uh, that tends to be one of those things. Oh, it still won't let me place it right there. Curious. I wonder why. If I scooch it forward by one, can I have it over here? I can have it like that, but it won't let me have them vertical. Interesting. All right, well, we're going to redesign this place a little bit later anyways. This is just like a holdout area where people can, like, scrub their bits to make sure that everything is okay and, like, everything is where it needs to be. Uh, we have a bedroom over here. We have a bedroom over here. And then we need room-specific objects. So these people are all going to need places to sleep at. So, yeah, dude, just throw, like, a dirty mattress on the floor over here. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And everybody's going to need a storage box for their stuff. So we'll just throw that at the foot of the mattress real fast. Uh, you can also go through and you can search for objects using, let's see here. Well, there is a little, well, it's filtering by bedroom right now. Oh, it's because I had something attached to my clicker. We can also go with decor just in case we want to make the rooms a little bit nicer and make them pop a little bit harder. So like we could put in like a table right there. We could put in, like, a comfy chair right here. And as you can see, over on the right, there's going to be a meter that dictates how much prestige is available inside the room. Oh, so that actually messed up, so it's a little bit too crowded, I guess. Okay. Fair enough. So we're actually losing prestige by having some of that stuff in there. Gotcha. So we're going to have to make, I think later on, we're going to have to make, like, big personal rooms for our people to live inside of. I think we also are going to need to have, like, another building. So we'll go ahead and get, like, another corrugated, like, place over here. I don't think that seven is going to be large enough for this one. So we'll call it, like, I feel like 11 might be a little bit over the top. Maybe we'll call it nine, though. There we go. I'm going to need a door, but I'm going to need interior walls as well. I'm going to go with this brick wall right here because that seems to be the stuff to me. And unfortunately, the length, there we go. I just wanted to subdivide it a little bit and make it look a little bit nicer. We'll grab a door over on this side. And, like, this is going to be our canteen. One cool thing is that if you put doors next to each other, they automatically turn into double doors. So that's pretty sweet. I actually really, really like that. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll have a door right there as well. I don't know if we need like transition doors on this side, but I'll go ahead and do it. And then one of these rooms right here is going to have to be our canteen. So we'll go ahead and take care of that real fast. So we'll have a big old canteen right there where people can eat and kind of get themselves taken care of. Uh, we are going to need a lobby, which is basically like a little meeting hall for people that come through the front gate. So I'll probably get on that in just a minute. This is probably going to be left open for right actually we can make this into our our inner holy sanctum dude that way we can give a sermon and then you can pop on into here for like some fried chicken and like you know a little bit of that old light you get some of that shasta cola inside of here get yourself all filled back up and then you can get right back to worshiping that sounds like the stuff to me all right so room specific objects for our canteen we need a serving table so we'll put that right there we need a canteen table and i think we could probably get away with the canteen tables like right there we need vending machines, so we can throw one of those in. And then we need a water cooler as well. Perfect. That's actually nice. I like it. Uh, for this room over here, we need to have a bronze idol that people can worship. Okay. Yeah, let's put in the bronze idol right there. And then we're going to need, like, a lectern that we can give our ministry from. So that'll go right there. And then we also need pews so that people have places to sit while they're being spoken to. 
So there we go. We'll kind of like have that right there. And we've got room for like nine people now, dude. That's perfectly enough room for everybody that we need. The other thing we could do is we could put like some decorations up inside of here. So we've got like foliage. I mean, I could put like a, yeah, like an indoor potted plant or something. And it does look like we have a lot of decorative stuff available. How big is the lava lamp? Yeah, dude, we gotta have some, yeah, throw some lava lamps in there, man. We gotta have some lava lamps. That sounds good, dude. What good is a cult that doesn't have lava lamps, man? Lava lamps are like one of my favorite things. I have like five of them. All right, we also need a building over here that will greet people as they come inside. So like, I think we just put in like a little building like so. That looks like the right thing. And then we put that in right there, we put that in right there. I'd love to run the fencing up and over here to make it so that like you kind of have to walk inside of here. That'd be pretty rad, but you know, we'll, we'll work on that later. I need that to be like one wider. And then of course we got to even out the doors, otherwise they're not centered and that's just going to be upsetting. Like who wants that? And then as far as rooms go, we need to make this into a lobby so that we can receive new cultists. And pretty much only need our lobby desk right here. That's pretty much it. So there you go. Our beautiful little reception desk. And we should have all the basics taken care of right now for the things that people need in order to get by. Look, we got people using the bathroom right now. We got people coming on in here to take a look at just the shrine to our great and sacred cash dragon. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, there are missions we can send people out on uh, to get the research office. I think that's probably a good idea. So let's go ahead and sign one of our cultists to go steal the idea of research from whoever it is that's hoarding all this knowledge. It looks like Amy Leaf is the only person that's actually, like, good at this. Everybody else has negatives. So we'll send her on out. And then what will happen here is that if you just keep an eye on this little meter, she'll actually travel out and make this thing happen. So there she is right there, walking on down the street. She got her dragon hat on. She's ready to go represent our one true religion to the people of the world. I know, they are hard-hearted, and they are stubborn, Lord Dragon. But please, bring them on in and soften their hearts to the message of your word so that they can give me their money. Amen. I mean, really, what is the point of a cult except to make, like, a whole bunch of money, dude? That's exactly what we're trying to do right here. Apparently, she shook, some, she shook somebody's hand too much. It's entirely possible that they fail these missions while they're out and about. BT dubs. They don't always succeed at it. Uh, we are going to need, like, a, a therapy area. And so it might not be a bad idea to just set up a little tiny therapy room right here. Uh, therapy is basically how we make all our money. That's pretty much what it comes down. Oh, that's not large enough. Okay, so, like... I think we may have to just kind of like reassign a different room to be our meditation theater. Let's call it a metal foundation over here. And like, how big is that building right there? So if we wanted to have like a good meditation theater, that actually seems like it might be okay. But basically your people need to meditate for their own spiritual guidance. Uh, we'll put in a door right there, like a big double door, just to kind of imply that this place is awesome. And then we will put a therapy room right inside of here so that we can start conversion therapying people. Uh, we can get a meditation stage, which unfortunately does not center. So that's going to drive me nuts. I need it to center. So we'll go... Oh, but then it's not going to center with that either. Oh, weak, dude. So something's going to be uncentered either way. All right, well, we'll do our best with what we have here. Let's not let's not cry over spilt therapy meditation studio, okay? Uh, we'll see the room specifics over here. We've got the meditation stage. I think we'll put it in the corner, like over on this side. And then we need music, obviously. Like, the music is going to be very, very important. So we'll put, like, a boom box, like, right there. And then we need meditation mats so that people can actually participate in the meditation. Oh, really? We have the maximum allowed inside that room. Okay, so apparently there's, like, a limit on the amount of, like, doodles and things that you can put all over the place. Fair enough. Let's see. Oh, we've got somebody. Hold on. Is he going to join us? Yes, welcome. This is a totally normal place where no one is odd whatsoever, and you will be accepted for all of your flaws. Please take this complimentary dragon hat. Oh, she's joined our religion. Yay! 
We got a new, she went straight to therapy too, dude. She's in here meditating. And what you'll notice is every now and again, we get like influence and we get like faith and we'll get stuff like PR and we'll get money from these guys doing things. And so like, we got to bring in some followers. Otherwise the cash flow is just not going to happen. So the research office, it looks like we succeeded. That gave us 500 bucks right there. And we've got access to a research office now, which is great. And so anyways, everybody got XP. All of your little guys level up. You do have full control over their skill points. Uh, so you don't have control over like what they do at the beginning of the game. But when they level up, you can basically adjust their stats upwards to make them like a better character, basically. So now that we have our research center, it's really important that we start doing research. So I'm just going to convert that little room right here into a research center. So we need a supercomputer to get this up and running, and then we need a research desk in order to get this rocking. And so we'll put that right there. You can't control what jobs and stuff people do. And in fact, I actually like how streamlined it is. So if you go on into here, you can take a look and it will have all the different jobs that everybody can do and you can mouse over and see what their skills are at it now as of right now we don't have anybody who's good at like anything but you can basically prioritize stuff sort of RimWorld style uh, this is like the basic way to do it and then in RimWorld you would have that other button that you could push where it swaps it over to a numerical value that lets you to get a little bit more it likes for you to get a little bit more granular control over what it is your colonists are doing could a sausage be fingerprinted I hope not, not if it was properly cleaned. Uh, so we can do a maintenance room. I think that's really important. So let's get the maintenance room first. Uh, the maintenance room, so our stuff is gonna break down over time. So objects in our base are going to randomly break and fall apart and like catch fire and stuff like that. The maintenance guy, his job is just to wander around the base and basically fix every, he's a janitor, all right? He wanders around the base. He's like, I'm gonna take care of this. And then like he fixes everything that's around with like a mop. You know what I mean? Like is your supercomputer broken? He fixes it with a mop. Uh, do you need to do some high level carpentry? He does it with a mop. Do you need to roll up a yoga mat? He does it with a mop. So on and so forth. Very, very... Just a just a single solution kind of guy we've got working on all this stuff. Let's let it pick up speed for a minute since we're waiting on research anyways. And when the research gets done, we'll come back. Oh, cool. We got another follower right here, too. And our research is done. Fantastic. So we now have access to a maintenance room. Uh, I would also like to maybe make a rec room. So we'll get somebody started on that research right there, too. Uh, as far as our maintenance room goes, though, we need to get that up and running pretty fast. So I'll probably just slap it onto the backside of this right here and just have like a little maintenance closet over here. Sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Let's see here. So like, is there a way for me to attach that? How come it's not building the wall right there? Ah, gotcha. Okay, so we got it figured out. It auto puts in the wall. And we'll go with like a utilitarian door over here. Something that looks a little bit more like it's maybe restricted access. And then we'll go with our room designation and we'll call this a... Where are you at, maintenance room? There you are. That's the maintenance room. Actually, it might not be big enough. I think we need more stuff for the maintenance room to work. So we've got a tool trolley over here and then we need a workbench. There we go, perfect. Room's all ready to rock. We'll worry about getting a whole bunch of prestige in every single room a little bit later. I don't think that it matters for right now. We did pick up a third follower right there, and so that'll be pretty cool. Sometimes all you want is a toilet bucket, but all you can find is a maggot pool. Search filters, oh, okay, it's a tutorial. I thought that maybe it was like an event pop-up that we had to deal with sort of RimWorld style. You know, toxic fallout is coming, and it's hit our dragon colony. My goal here is to get everybody into dragon hats as soon as possible. When this gets all the way up, you can take a look at the things. So we need to learn how to show their traits, basically, so that we can start scouting people that actually have the skill sets. As you've noticed, you have a limited amount of people that can actually be full-blooded cultists effectively and so we've got a couple people that are really really bad so I would actually exile them and if we can get some of these new followers that are coming on in that are a little bit better at the job then I would actually just assign them to that task in all honesty I do think we're gonna need a little bit more space here uh, to build like a couple of rooms that people can sleep in because I think all of our followers need like restful areas and so let's do that yeah, that looks like a good enough restful area. Sure, that looks like a solid restful area too. Restfulness, what everyone needs. Uh, we'll go ahead and put like a double door in right there, a little double door in right there. This last room right here, I don't know what I want to do with it, so I'm just going to kind of like leave it where it's at for right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and put in another bedroom over here. There we go, bedroom's ready to rock. And then we'll drop in a couple more dirty mattresses. Let 
I'm just trying to make sure that we got enough room for all the cultists that we're trying to have. And then maybe some decorative objects up inside of here. Like, what if we have pitchers? Yeah. Because those don't take up space. They just kind of go on a wall. This will be kind of like a display of the rules for living here effectively. I need something that's like on theme too. Like, do we have anything kind of like dragon-like that I can put on the wall? Yeah, the egg, dude. All glory and power to the magnanimous egg. There we go. We just got to remind them all the time that the egg is their responsibility. The egg throne. It must be recompensed. It's time for a rebrand. That pumpkin head might have felt like the right fashion choice at the time, but tastes change. Apparently, we can recustomize our cult at any time, which is actually nice. Uh, you could do a little rebrand if you feel like maybe the cult doesn't have the things that you want them to have in order to get by. I don't want to make that into a bathroom. I may actually bulldoze this right here and make like a big dedicated bathroom for everybody. Oh, it's time for our sermon. Um, I'll look upon the great and powerful dragon whose egg warms us, whose egg warms us. Now we will worship the egg. Yes, we will worship, we'll worship again. Now we will worship the egg. Okay, so apparently I got a bunch of faith. Uh, I've used up some of my influence on research, so that's okay. They will occasionally hear the whispers of the cash dragon. That's all I ask. That your ears and your eyes and your mind be receptive to the great truth. Oh, I guess the followers go home at the end of the day. It looks like they don't sleep here, so like these extra bedrooms were kind of pointless. I thought that the followers were going to sleep. I thought we were going to have a sleepover, dude. I thought we were going to get the pizzas and the sodas and, like, the, the black and white TV hooked up with the Nintendo. Man. So morning has arrived, and the receptionists have apparently taken somebody's money for something. I don't think they actually joined. I mean, we did get one more follower, but, like, she came up to reception and then just, like, bailed. I don't know. You need to keep a diary. Why? Oh, they're just talking about me scheduling people to do stuff. Gotcha. So what you'll find is that one thing I like about this game is they telegraph very clearly what your characters are good for. And so if you go down to like the player synopsis down here on each of your cultists, it will tell you right there like how good this cultist is. So like three quarters of our cultists right now are very poor. What that means is that their potential is incredibly limited as far as like growth goes. And so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to like fire them and replace them with other people that are ready to join us. She has a negative disposition. Oh no, your thetans are all over the place, man. That person's not quite ready. Although Alice Cochran may be ready pretty soon. So we'll kind of like wait and see with her. We've got lots of prayer going on. We're iterating money right now. That's good, just a one dollar at a time. That's how this all functions. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on these people and try to figure out if they're actually like good for anything. They've all got traits, and so it's entirely possible that we may rotate through a lot of people as like main cultists. Now there is a downside. Oop, it's a sign. Six, 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 six. It's a sign. It's a sign. We are blessed by the great egg. Uh, so we can get an energy spa. Followers using this get XP and generate influence. Okay. We've got a spirit chamber over here. Same thing. It looks like we've got the leader's sanctum and we've got the mood boost. So we can pay our influence to raise everybody's mood. Or we can upgrade our rec room tech. All right. I'll probably go for rec room tech, I think. Yeah, let's start with rec room tech and just kind of see how that goes. Everybody get on in here. Everybody pay your $6 and make this thing happen. Oh, she's ready to level up. Well, that's good. I think that retail is what makes her... Wait, hold on. One of these is better for them. Let's see. Public speaking increases recruitment chance on the street. We've got planning. One of these increases your recruitment speed through the lobby, and I don't remember which one. Okay, so it's that right there. She's now a level 3 bluffer, so when people come through there's a better chance that they will join us as followers and give us $100. So with our rec room, did I even make a rec room? I don't know if I made a rec room. I don't think I did. Do they have a way to fulfill their fun needs? Is that a, is that a thing? Oh, cool, this guy's got level ups as well. Well, it looks like he's in here working as a preacher. So maybe we'll find what makes him better as a preacher. I'm not sure which one of these affects preaching. 
I mean, I guess the easy way to figure that out would be to go to our menu over here, and then we just take a look at the scheduling. And it looks like inside the Dragon's Realm, you need bluffing and you need public speaking. Okay. So let's boost up that public speaking then. I like that everything is properly tooltip so that you can find the information that you need in order to make stuff happen. Uh, I very much appreciate that. There's nothing worse with a colony management game than not knowing exactly what stuff does. And yeah, look, we're getting six and a half dollars off people now instead of just six dollars. Very, very nice. So that actually increased by a decent amount our chances of making money out here. So there is like a little bit of RPG development to each of your cultists as well that I think is going to be a very, very positive thing. Uh, this game is currently out in early access, so they're going to be adding more content to it. Taking a look at the research tree, it looks like there's a lot of content in the game already, though, in the first early access. Every single one of these is giving you new items, new buildings, new options, new stuff, new missions, that sort of thing. And so, like, I, I feel as though if this is the first step of the early access, I'm excited to see what's coming. Normally, early access is kind of like a dirty term, like, oh, there's obviously going to be stuff missing. But for right now, just from that research tree, there's quite a bit to work on. So anyways, honey, I joined a cult. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. Today it was honey, I joined a cult. Tomorrow it will more than likely be something else. Thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, everybody.